So in this activity, we're going to learn how to reconstruct a phylogenetic tree using a very simple matrix. Okay? Now, this is the way that I like to explain this. As we look across the top here, we see that we have these characters. right? So in this case, we have six characters. Each one of these characters um, is, is offering evidence about groupings that can happen among the taxa. So the taxa are along this side, where we have an outgroup. So an outgroup is something that is not related, closely related to the other taxa, which are called the in-group. So the outgroup is always something that for sure is on the outside of those organisms that you're interested in reconstructing a tree to look at their relationships. So we, in this case, we have six characters and we have five taxa or five species that we're going to be making a tree from. And one of those is we've determined is the outgroup. So I do this one character at a time. So what does character number one say? Character number one says that A, B, C, and D all share some character in common. Now I don't have what that is, but that, that could be something like, you know, they all have hair, right? If, if they were all mammals and if the outgroup were, say, a bird or, or a, a reptile. So I like to write all four of those and then do a circle. Character number two, what does it say? Well, it says that A and D are sharing something, right? Because if we look up here, we can see the A and the D. So, net, so then we can put a circle around those. Next, we have character three. Character three says B and C. So I like to write my B and my C and put a circle around it. And then I go to character number four. Character number four is only B. That's actually not an interesting character because it tells nothing about relationships. But if you want, you can put B and put one, a circle around it. Character number five says A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. And character number six says A and D. So I have character number six saying A and D. So I have my six characters, right? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now you do these rules. Rule number one, the smallest most common group, you put that up first. Now what I mean by that is the smallest most common. Well in this case it's B, but again B is not interesting. I mean I can go ahead and over here write B, but that's kind of uninteresting. Okay, so I've taken care of that piece of evidence. The next piece of evidence, the smallest most common, well it's actually AD. There are two characters that supported the grouping AD. So I can come over here and go A and D. So I've put them up and then because they share a circle, they also share a node. So they come together, AD. Okay, now remember B was off by itself so I didn't have to draw a line to anything yet. Okay, so I've taken care of that piece of evidence and that piece of evidence. What is the next smallest most common grouping? It's BC. Ah, so there's my B already, so I can put my C there and then bring them together with a node, right? Okay, so now I took care of that piece of evidence. The next piece of evidence says A, B, C, D. Well, there's my A, there's my B, there's my C, and there's my D. So they can all come together in a node. And then I just have the outgroup. And so the question is, can the, should the outgroup go over here or over here? And the answer is... It doesn't matter, right? Because nodes can rotate. So I'll just put it over here for now. There's my out group. So that is the tree. That's how you reconstruct a tree from a character matrix. You go one character at a time. You ask the question, what evidence or what grouping does that character support? I like to write them out as like a list and put a little circle around them. And you go do that all the way down the character matrix. When you're done, you use the rule of the smallest most common, put those up first, unite them with a node, and work your way down. And when you do that, you will end up with the most parsimonious tree for that character matrix. And that's how it's done.